Hi everybody, welcome to another tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. Today we are going to continue our journey on understanding and learning how to use ID700, focusing specifically on envelopes. So before I start, please I'd like to remind my viewers to subscribe and that would be great. It helps the uh, channel to grow and bring more videos, tutorials and give away. So let's start. I'm inside the AUM. I have created an audio channel with ID700 loaded in the input node and I have also selected a reverb effect as insert effects. Okay, let's uh, open uh, ID700. As you can see, I moved the window slightly up uh, so that I can have a little bit more space. The window is a little bit bigger and that allows me to see uh, two sections uh, of the synth. In this case, at the top, I have the algorithm views and at the bottom, I can see specific uh, uh, elements of the synth like in this case, wave A, but it could be something else. So let's change the algorithm to seven. We have our default preset and let's click on oscillator number one. Now let's uh, select controller up here so we can play um, the keyboard. Let's go up an octave as well. Okay, perfect. In previous uh, videos, I showed you how you can add modulation down here. So for example, you can select the modulation to smoothed random, you can apply a multiplier, and then you can reduce the timing. And here we go. You have the level going up and down for oscillator number one. Of course, you can achieve the same, removing the uh, modulation source moving up and down this point here like so so let's click on large let's hold the note and try so what would be good is if this modulation could move up and down as the time progresses in a way that you like to define. And this is where the envelope comes in. So first thing first, you have your level uh, here vertically and then horizontally here, you have your time. Okay, and then you can see in seconds. First thing to notice is that it's not a linear scale. So for example, you up to here is one second, but then in this um, small space or gap here, you have another second, you go to two seconds, four, eight, six, etc., etc. So the, just bear that in mind. Also, we have only one point at the moment. If you look up here on the right hand side, it says point one, which is reference to the point that is selected. It says time here at zero. You cannot change that because it is the first point, but you can change the level here. Click and hold and move it up and down. Okay, like so. Now, if I double click somewhere, I create a second point. So if I play a note, okay, that second point is selected. It says here now point two, and now you the time is activated, so you can change the timing here as well, the level as well. And you can continue like that, adding multiple points. Remember the scale on time is not linear. So let's play. Okay, fantastic. Let's say that I want to keep that shape because I like it, but I want to be able to play a little bit and return them back to the original state. I click this icon here. So I copy the current state of the points. I make some modification, add points, things like that. And then at some point I think, okay, I want to go back. So I click this other icon here and he pasted back what I previously copied. So that's a nice functionality. And you can use that also to pass copy and paste between different uh, uh, elements like other oscillators. So you can copy oscillator number one and paste on oscillator number two, which is great. If you recall, we have seen the modulation before, and I also um, gave you a quick recap at the beginning of this video. Here on the right hand side, below the point, you find point modulation. It works in a similar way of the overall modulation, but it is specific to that point. So let me give you an example. So let's uh, select this point, clicking on that, 
So point number three, which I can also do using this arrow, moving to previous point and next point, okay? Now let's select for point number three a smoothed random envelope and then give some intensity and see what happens. So what happens is that as the plane is approaching point number two, uh, sorry, after it has uh, gone through point number two, you will see the point modulation started to take effect gradually up to when it comes to point number three, where you will have the maximum intensity. Okay, that uh, is perfect. And so you can use that point modulation to add other characters to the envelope. So let's remove that. Now, let me show you something else, which is really, really cool. Let's select the last point or point number four. You can add some conditions. So actually, it's better if I show you these on point number three. So let's move here to the arrow. Next, it says uh, pause if key is down. So let's try, click on C4 and hold. So it stops on point number three. Let's change the condition here. Let's go to the next one, which says, says stop if key is up. So if you click and hold, it goes through. If I click and um, stop with uh, playing that no, so I, if I move my finger or the cursor of the mouse up, um, it will stop playing there. You see, and it stopped playing there, which is actually really cool. The other thing you can do, and now let's move to point number four. Um, you can say um, jump to point. So you can say jump to point number two. And the condition will be always. So let's try. And you can set also other condition. You can say go through twice and then don't jump anymore. So. Or you can also have it random as well, which is really, really nice. You, you also have a two additional condition, jump to point two if the key is up, or jump to point two if the key is down. I use this a lot, for example, when you want uh, uh, the jumpy to continue if you're pressing the keys down, but as soon as you release them, of course, you don't want, uh, you don't want, you, you want the jumping to stop, really. Um, one other thing I also wanted to show you now that uh, you can use the envelope and also the different condition. Let's say that on point number four, we have a jumping condition if the key is down and we also have a point modulation. Okay, let's try. If I was to release um, the key after point number three, the the amplitude of that of the sound will drop significantly, right? The way that it drops is determined by the ADSR as, as any other synth. And if you go back to the algorithm view, you find an amplifier element here, which you can also access uh, um, pressing down here on the bottom right. So let's click on it. And this is where you see your typical attack decay sustain release. So let's try, uh, let's go back to controller. So you can see that the amplitude stopped there. So that uh, this gap here, vertical here, it defines uh, your sustain. And then the time here uh, to go from point one to point two is your attack. Then from point two to point three is your decay. And then from point three to point four, is your release. So in this way now, you can modify in a similar way as you just learned now how to create and modify envelopes on oscillator number one. And you can create your um, own ADSR as you like, right? You can give a lot of release, right? You can decide to move this point uh, further up, this one also to have a more uh, uh, attack. And remember, and in the meantime, your oscillator number one is still going through the envelope as previously defined. But the great thing is that if on point three, for example, now I was to say, um, uh, for example, 
pause if key is down. If I release it, because I have a longer release now, you can still hear the point modulation. So that is why it's important to always check what you have as an envelope on the amplifier. Now let's go back to the algorithm view. And what you can see here is that alongside the amplifier, you have also location module and also filter module. So the, your location module is what you will use for your pun. And uh, here you see at the bottom left, it says L, which stands for left, and here at the top it says right. So you can create something uh, like um, a, a, an LFOS effect to uh, modulate from left to right channel, just using the envelope. So let's try, let's move these down so that uh, it would be on point one to the left. Then we say that in half a second, it will reach, um, well, actually in one second, it will reach um, a max to the right channel. Then in the next second, it will reach um, uh, the um, left channel. And then on that point, we're going to put the condition which says um, um, jump back to point number one. And let's try, let's click on controller. And let's go back to oscillator number one and let's change the condition to um, none. So hopefully if you have a headphones on, you will be able to hear that the sound is moving from the left to the right channel. One thing to remember, which is the same also on the frequency module is if you increase the, change the location here in the default settings, then you will not start from, uh, um, the left channel, it will add that um, 1.86, as it says here, towards the right channel. And you can see how as it as moves uh, on the envelope screen. If I increase that a lot. And it stay up here a lot because it's still going through the envelopes from a timing perspective. So remember that, double click on that and to go back to the default, to the center, if you want to follow accurately what you have defined in the envelopes, on the envelope screen. The other thing as well, going back to the algorithm, we can change the filter as well. That is your classical um, uh, filter where you have cutoff here for the frequency and resonance, and it works exactly the same way as a location. So if you want to, for example, moving up and down the cutoff from very low frequency from zero, just set this bar to zero. Let's say that we want these to go up very quickly to uh, alpha second uh, uh, to the max, and then in the next after second down to zero, and then we put the condition to cycle again. So let's listen. Really interesting. And of course, as now you know how to create envelopes, you can apply to all the other elements in a similar way. So let's go back to the algorithm. And that is why it's important to always choose the right algorithm. We know that in order to allow uh, oscillator number, number four to modulate on oscillator number one, we need to open this gate, index four. Let's click on index four and let's create an envelope. So let's say, uh, yeah. Let's do the same in half, in half a second, you go to the maximum. In the other half a second, you go down to the minimal. And then let's add the condition to repeat. And let's try and let's see what we have created. Let's make this faster. Let's click here. Let's do that in half, like so. Hopefully you have your headphones on so that you can hear um, the differences in sound. The other thing I wanted also to show you is that uh, timing can be affected overall. So if you go back to the algorithm, you have a timing scaling here. And if you move this right to the right hand side, you can delay uh, timing by 400%. So let's try. And of course, if you turn it to the left hand side, you can increase timing by 25%.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, hope you found this useful. Now you know how to create envelopes uh, and add conditions, point modulation. So really uh, the screen which you see here, which can be applied to a lot of the modules. We've gone through it and you can use it to create now a more interesting sound. Now we are going to move in the next video to explain how waves work. And then after that, we will be ready to combine the two through a morph module. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.